This past Saturday, LSU junior guard Jalen Cook finally returned to the court against a tough battle between the LSU Tigers and the Texas Longhorns. Jalen Cook's long-awaited return to the team alongside a career-high 33 points from Jordan Wright gives LSU fans all around hope for the start of a better season. And in other news of basketball from LSU, the Lady Tigers head coach Kim Mulkey was ejected from Sunday's game against Northwestern State in the final five minutes of the game that ended in an 81-36 victory for the Tigers. Ultimately, Coach Mulkey was upset about a charging foul that was handed to Anissa Morrow late in the fourth quarter, and this led to a double technical and Kim Mulkey having to leave the game. After this commercial, I'll be talking about this men's basketball team and what exactly happened Saturday night to make a loss against Texas seem so special. Then I'll be bringing on the assistant editor of Tiger Rag, William Weathers, to talk about this past Sunday's drama-filled ending of a game for the Lady Tigers. Before we go into all of that, I would like to thank our sponsor, Pawpaw Campers and Cars. That's pawpawsrvs.com, 1-800-728-CAMP, 1-800-728-2267. Hey neighbors, we're not that far from where you are. Make that short drive to Paw Paws Campers in Picayune and see our Wildwood, Catalina, Sportsman, and Singer trailer lines and our Rockwood and Heritage Glen fifth wheel lines. From Homa to Hammond, Biloxi to Jackson, and Mobile and Pensacola, we're not that far from where you are. Come and see us. You're gonna love the way we deal. Paw Paws Campers City in Picayune. You're gonna love the way we deal. Welcome back, and like I said, Saturday's performance from these Tigers gives hope to all fans that this basketball team may be onto something with Jalen Cook back in the mix. At a first glance, it looked like the number 19 Texas Longhorns had put an end to the consistently inconsistent LSU Tigers. And at halftime, the Longhorns jumped out to a 19-point halftime lead against a sluggish to the start LSU then continued to up that lead to 22 points in the first minute of the second half. Although the Longhorns won this game, the Tigers showed up when it mattered in the second half. Of course, there was no surprise with the LSU guard, Jordan Wright, who scored 31 points in the final 20 minutes of the game and finished with a career high of 33 points. In the end, Wright led four Tigers who scored in double figures, Jalen Cook and Derek Fountain, who both added 13 points each, and then Hunter Dean, who scored 11 points. What was most exciting about this game was how close of a game it was and watching these Tigers beat up a nationally ranked team in the second half. The Longhorns shot 54% from the field and made 10 of 20 from three-point range, and LSU shot 46% and made 11 shots from beyond the arc. I definitely think that Jalen Cook's return to the team has added some spice and has amped these boys up in their game. LSU has two more chances to embrace its apparently new identity and get used to playing with Cook in command on the floor. The Tigers will be hosting Lamar on Thursday night at 8 p.m. in the PMAC. All right, now that we've finished up with the men's game, let's jump into the women's basketball game this past Sunday. Here with me is the assistant editor of Tiger Rag, William Weathers, how are you doing today, William? Doing good, thank you. I know we were talking earlier about this, William, but you were at this game, and I'm sure you weren't expecting such a dramatic end to it. I mean, Kim Mulkey getting ejected out of the game, leading to the associate head coach, Bob, uh, Bob Starkey, having to take over in the last five minutes of the game. That I'm sure you weren't expecting that of all cards you could have pulled. No, um, it was a really relatively you know lifeless crowd. I mean... They didn't do a lot, you know. They weren't spectacular play, you know. They were they're obviously playing an overmatched opponent, so you can just kind of like name your score. Oh, Angel Reese played really, really good throughout, and then other people kind of chipped in. You know, Michaela Williams played better later, and then uh, you know Flage was solid, and then all of a sudden, you know, here we are at, at seventy-one to thirty, and uh, Anissa Moore is driving in for a layup and, and gets called for a charge, and uh, so you know, you wipe up the bucket. And okay, we go. We think you're just going to go down and play the next the next possession, and, and you know, Mulkey just came unglued, and uh, and she's you know she said this over and over. You know, she'll tell you we don't look at the score. You know, we we're we're, we're about you know 
playing the next possession and, and doing well with his offense or defense. And that told me she could have cared less that they were up by 40 when in, obviously in no danger of losing. It was just a surprising point in the game to to make her, her point, you know, get her point across. And then, as she said in the press conference last night, she's like, she she, she gave the, the official no no way out. He's like, she goes, toss me. He goes, I'm not leaving here until you toss me. So she, you know, it, it's, it sends a message to her team that obviously she's still fighting for them, even though it's 41-point differential and, and no lose. You know, again, they were not going to lose that game, but um, – so, yes, it was nothing that you could see coming. She wasn't overly irate during the, the course of the three quarters before. Like, why then? But she did it, and uh, I probably – I'm not saying she won't contest another phone, another call because a lot of it is coming – you know, there's a coach's box, so you can't come out the coach's box. That's obviously being more uh, implied this year. But, you know, she was, I mean, wailing her hand, and she's like – just really, like, looked <laughs> left of center there for a while. But – um she seemed to be all contrite afterward and, and kind of laughed it off, but uh, it was really, yeah, it was a strange timing and, and a way like to, 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 to kind of finish the game. Yeah, I thought that it was really sweet to see the moment of Angel kind of pulling Mulkey back, and I know Reese had a great game, and you, I mean, I know you sat there and said they all kind of had a great game, but I mean, Angel Reese herself having a game high of 25 points, with a rebound honor at 14 with Anisha Moro, who scored 16 points in that game. Like you said, McKay Williams, freshman, scoring 14 in the final 14 minutes of the game. All the three-pointers being, again, shot from Michaela Williams. I don't think anybody's ever going to get tired of holding their three fingers up every time <laughs> Michaela goes on the three-point line. Yeah, it, was a, it was an eye-opening performance because Michaela missed her first eight shots of the game. And, uh, you know, the, the team didn't suffer because there are other people who can score. And then she finally got going and scored seven points in the third quarter. So all her 14 points came in the last 14 minutes of the game. But she stayed engaged. You know, it wasn't like she moped her, you know, she drooped her shoulders or, or moped. And that's a great sign from a freshman when things aren't going well that you, you, can, you stay engaged and, 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 think, and good things will continue to happen for her. And, and they did. And uh, I think uh, Angel mentioned last night that, you know, people like her as an upperclassman are going to try to help. Uh, and keep encouraging her, you know, don't worry, you know, obviously we have bigger games, we, we want you to be, you know, things don't start, because sometimes things don't start well, then they don't end well. well. She did that, you know, she was able to overcome that, missed her first eight shots, and still scored 14, and again, the, 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 the differential wasn't going to matter, it was just how her performance kind of stayed uh, like that, not, not dropped. Yeah, her poison attitude on the court altogether, and even in the press conferences, I think she's very well put together for a freshman coming in, especially coming in with the fame that she has. But what other players were you impressed with watching Sunday? From a scoring standpoint, I mean, from beginning to end, I thought Flaget Johnson, she was very good because they played a lot of zone, and uh, it's not easy to uh, to drive and, 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 and get through. And she was terrific in, in getting to the rim. A person who's not going to show up scoring-wise was last year Poa. Last year because of the uh, continuing foot injury to Haley Van Lith, is the, the point guard, and she obviously plays extended minutes. But she had, um, it was five assists and six steals. Um, she can score, but she didn't have to. Uh, she, I think she scored two. But her value to her team was defending and, uh, and distributing the ball. Um, Aaliyah Del Rosario had got some, some points later on, but it wasn't, she wasn't as good as she was against as McNeese, and that's to be expected. You're not going to put together those type of games. Always. She's trying to gain minutes, trying to gain the experience, and she did. So I would say you, know, they, you had the four double-figure scores, two double-doubles, and I thought um, uh, last year's contributions were, were very, very significant. So do you think that this team is handling Haley being gone well? Obviously, they're still winning, but I know they're also not playing who they're going to be playing in January, which is what I think Mulkey said in one of her last press conferences, is that, of course, they want Haley to sit out now because it's better to sit out now than once the SEC opponents start coming in. Right. It's, it's, it, is very, it is very difficult to tell because the, the games are so lopsided. You know, They're going to play um, Coppin State, uh, which is a homecoming for Angel Reese on Wednesday, and then they're three and nine. Uh, but this is, a, you know, it's, a, it's about giving back and, and her going to play a game back at home. So I wouldn't expect Haley to play then. 
And then the, the last non-conference game is the following Thursday, I believe, against Jacksonville. Whatever it takes to get her, you know, 100%, which is a nagging, you know, is nagging foot injury, kind of the ball of your foot. And um, so no, we really can't tell against somebody, you know, who can press, uh, who can, who's, who, who got quick guards, how, how will last here and, and the other guards hand, stand up to that kind of, uh, if it's constant pressure. So right now you're kind of, Kind of getting a buy, a pass in, in the sense that no one can make you pay for that. You know, you 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 know, your depth is affected because you, you know you no longer have Kaylee, excuse me, Kateri Poole. So you're you're going to rely on last year. Michaela can handle the ball, and then you know hopefully when Haley comes back. All right, and I know that you kind of said this, but yeah, I mean Coppin State Wednesday homecoming for Angel Reese. How excited do you think Angel Reese is to go back home and play? She was you know, really, really, you know, she got to go to the press conference on Sunday afterward and is obviously very ecstatic. Um, you know, she played her first two years at the University of uh, Maryland. Uh, I think I looked at geographic. I think it's 30 minutes from where Coppin's located. I'm not sure what the city is. And uh, so and she obviously has had family. And it was a big reason why she went to Maryland because uh, her grandparents were incapable of flying. So she, she remained close to home for those first two years. She's going to have a big, big surprise. In fact, the place is already sold out for a team that's three and nine. That tells you the draw that LSU and Angel Reese has, that she's going to come and play this game. Uh, it's a pink game, so it's a, it's a uh, Coppin will wear pink jerseys. LSU will, will be look, will, we are wearing white on the road. But uh, it's a, it's, so it's a breast cancer awareness for, for the K. Yow Foundation. And, you know, one of the city's favorite, say, daughters is coming back uh she's gonna like they went today they flew so she'll give the, the team a little bit of a tour uh they had a a court named in her honor she donated some money this summer she'll get to take them to this i don't know, outdoor facility uh and she'll take them she, she mentioned a restaurant that that's going to cater their meal which you know crab cakes and, and and blue blue crabs and whatever you know the things that common to to the east coast people uh, their, their appetite so she's gonna she's looking forward to it she's gonna be a tour guide and and get, get them take them back to her youth and, and show them some of the people that kind of uh, you know were some of her mentors you know assistant uh, head coaches high school coaches and her in and, and former teammates so um it's a great uh thing because kim's going to try to do this as many like whatever kids don't fall in the sec footprint so baltimore obviously doesn't She's going to try to get them back a game like next year. They're going to try, they're going to play in Bossier City for Michaela against Grambling. So they'll try to get people back and at least play one game in their in their and that's it's going to be a nice homecoming for her. Again, I don't think it's going to be a game where they should be severely challenged by a team that's three and nine. This is a like a a five thousand seat gym. This is a small. So imagine that place being packed. And it's going to be five thousand people screaming. Stand in room only. It would be, uh, yes. I have two predictions that I want you to answer for me. Since it's a pink out game, how much glitter and pink do you think Coach Mulkey is going to be wearing? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you predict? Like, what score point range do you predict this game going in? I think she'll she'll probably rise to the occasion and and have a, a nice glittery uh, sequin jacket of some sort, or it'll be the the pink hue. Uh, to, to fit in because there's no one that's a bigger fan of Kay Yow than, than, than Coach Mulkey. And um, I, I would suspect, the, the, you know, because yesterday's performance was not a great one overall. And um, I, I suspect 30-plus point differential. I, I just, they they have two or three double-figure double scores, but this is a team that's, it's, this is a you know low, lower-level conference. Uh, they did play Kent, Kent, Kent State, so there's one common opponent, and Kent State beat them. Uh, it was under twenty, and LSU beat them by thirty. So you just look at common common foes. So I don't. Again, I think this is not going to be. This is more about the opportunity to take her back home and get her a chance to play close home than it is like finding this really great non conference matchup. All right. Well, thank you so much, William, for coming on today. I guess we'll see how much pink and Mulkey can throw on her <laughs> one body Wednesday night. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll it'll be. She'll represent. All right, thank you, William. Okay. People come from everywhere to Pawpaw's Campers and Cars. All that Pawpaw's Campers is hit is uh, something, something, something. Pawpaw's Campers and Cars are people. <laughs>
and we're gonna let it go for I forgot. Uh oh. Take the whole family. Uh, 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 uh. I'm over to pick you. We got something for you. <laughs> All right. What else are we gonna say? <laughs> Pawpaw's nice price dot com. That's probably all we need to say. <laughs> all right, that's it for today's episode. Thank you, William, for coming in on today's show. It's always fun to get your insight on these lady tigers and what they're up to. Don't forget to tune in to the women's basketball game this Wednesday at 5 p.m. against Coppin State. And then the men's basketball team will be playing this Thursday against Lamar at 8 p.m. in the PMAC. The LSU gymnastic team hosted an exposition in the PMAC this past Saturday to show off their talent for this coming up season. And y'all, this is not a gymnastics team y'all are going to want to sleep on or miss out on this season. This gymnastics team is ranked number two in the college gym news preseason top 25 and number three in the WCGA coaches poll. They will be opening up their 2024 season January 5th at home against the number 14 Ohio State. Thank you guys for listening in. And as always, this is Cameron Connor, your host with Tiger Rag Audible's podcast. And we'll be back later this week with more LSU updates. Before I go, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Paul Paul's Campers and Cars. That's PaulPaulsRVs.com, 1-800-728-CAMP, 1-800-728-2267.